Hi. Good, good afternoon. Yes. Hello. Well, Kaylee, I have a question. Kaylee, do you have a question for me? Um, how do I do this? How do I do this? No, I, you had a better specific question than that. What was your more specific question than that? I don't remember. I, was I, I, I will remind you. I will remind you what's this. What did you say? What's a linear factor? What is a linear factor? Thank you. That was the question. So, let's go ahead and talk about what a linear factor is. What do we call this thing right here? There's a X name for it. Standard form? A standard form of a what? What is that? Polynomial. Of a polynomial? Okay, polynomial. Very good. That's what I was looking for. Polynomial. That's one of the things I look for. Because that's three. Where's your stickers at? And what kind of polynomial is this called? Function? Actually, you know something? Usually when you say you have a function, that usually has an equal sign to it somewhere. Usually. Now, now some people will say this is a function too. You could saw it, but usually you equal sign. What did you say? Quadratic. quadratic. Yes, this is called a quadratic expression. Function. Quadratic expression, but a quadratic trinomial. And usually when you have the factors of a quadratic trinomial, there are going to be two linear factors. And these linear factors are going to be, what they're going to be called is they will be called linear binomials. And usually the product of two linear binomials is a quadratic trinomial. So that's just some basic vocabulary. And I appreciate you bringing that up even before we turn on the camera. And so how would you find the factors, the linear factors of this guy right here? Math. You can figure out what <laughs> plus together to get 12. Like add together to get All right, so Emily was saying that she's, she's kind of, she's back there in the corner, but she says, what two numbers, and, and you can correct me wrong, Emily, what two numbers when multiplied together equal negative 12, but when added together equal negative 1? Was that what you meant to say? Okay, great. And so what would those numbers be? One of them is going to be negative 4 and positive 3. Okay, one of them's going to be negative, and one's, who, who said one's going to be negative and one positive? Kaylee. I did. Right? Yeah, and, and what happens is you see that negative sign, and you, you see this being negative here, you know that one has to be positive and one is negative. And then what are the numbers here going to be? Four, four and three. So four and three. Okay, and then if you multiply these back together, you're going to get negative 4x plus 3x. So this is going to work out for us. Did anybody use the box method on this? No. You didn't? Now, what the box method looks like this. And what's happened is box method, to me, it's kind of like the training wheels for factoring. Because you have x squared, x, and x. Then you ask yourself the same question that Emily was asking. And then you would have, uh, you, and you can try different things. So you get 3x, negative 4x, and negative 12. And then you can add these together, and you'll see that we get this, okay? So. Okay, questions on this one? Wait, no. And really, number two is quite similar to number one. Did you do that already? Number no. two? Yes. You did it? I was looking at this Emily over here. Good job, Emily. You didn't work it out? Go ahead and work it out. And then ask, then it. Try, try it, and then ask a neighbor if you have trouble. You have helpful neighbors there.
Okay, Kayla, Kayla gives us this as an answer here. Emily, did, did you get that too? Did you get that too, Emily? Did you get that? Yeah. Okay, Kayla, or Kayla, how did you figure that out? So you tried mentally different factors of 28 yes. till they worked out essentially. And I heard somebody mention, uh, I don't know if it was Kaylee back here, somebody that if you have positive here and, and negative here, that means you're going to have to have a negative and a negative, right? So, uh, so that should be pretty simple. And so that's all there is to that one, okay? Any questions on that one? Okay, now we go on to number three, which adds a level of complexity to the issue. We got it. Yeah. We've been working it. We got it. You've been working it? You got it already? Can we work it on the board? Well, you, you could. The thing about it is, is, is you might, if we upload the video, you're going to be on camera. I don't know how that's going to, if that'll be okay with your parents and stuff like that. Yeah, they don't care. They don't care? Nope. So, uh, if, if you wouldn't mind that, I think you can do that. Yeah. I'm feeling really confident right now. Yeah, why should be so wrong? Yeah. Let me try to plug it in again. Put a little markers. Put up. Okay. Okay, yeah. Last year, yeah, uh, it, really. it went out of adjustment a lot. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, of course. All right, here we go. Yeah. You can use whichever color you like. So she's using something called the X method. Did. Was this something you remembered from last year? Nope. Yes. No. Really? Did you remember this from last year? I mean, I probably did it, but I don't I did it, but I don't remember. You remember, but see, that's like I, when I first learned to do it, I was like you, the first time I did, oh yeah, this really works. And then after a summer off, I didn't quite remember it really well. So it took me about two or three times, seasons through to get this. What did you say, Emily? You had something to say? Oh, you remembered it? I did. Do you remember this? You, yes. Okay. Okay, in, in uh, fifth period class, we had Karina remembered it really well, and Elizabeth remembered it kind of. Okay, that's really, that's really good. Really clear writing. It's better than the writing I would have done. Okay. I didn't hear her talk while she did her excellent work. But here you have AC, and that goes up here. So AC goes here, B goes down here. And then you ask yourself the same question, what two numbers do you add together to get negative 11, but multiply together to get 18? And so that's what she did. And then she divides by A, 
And so this over here, will negative 9 over 3 will simplify to this, or to this. You have x minus 2 thirds, and you bottoms up that 3 there, and so that's what you get. What do you do with the negative? With the negative eleven, yeah, that's the that's the number that these two have to add up to. Okay, so, but to me, when I when I do this year over year, the thing that I have trouble remembering sometimes is just little steps like dividing by a again, right? So those are little. So, were you able to know remember that pretty well from last year? Yeah, we normally talk through it. So you kind of you kind of helped each other by talking through it mm -hmm. to help yourself remember from last year. Well, that's really good. So I just have to say that's impressed, impressive me. Okay, and then we have number four, which is a similar type deal. Hold on, what does that six mean? There's not a six, that could be. Yeah, that's a B, right. So this thing here is a, is a B, okay, which is, ne which is where negative 11 comes from. And what you have for number four is a very similar type of a problem. So you could use the same technique. Yes, did you use the same technique? No. Yes. Did, or did it mentally? Okay, well, one thing you can do for this is in truth, you don't even you don't need to use the X method. Before I learned the X method, I never did the X method. I did it probably like you're talking about. How did you do this? So did you just try out different factors until it worked? So what, what did you get? 3x minus 1 and 2x minus 1. So we have, we have negative 2x here, and we have negative 3x, which added together equal negative 5x. So that's going to be our answer, right? And she didn't do the x method. She just sort of worked it out that way, which really, in my mathematics career, that's what I always did until I learned the X method. Did you guys use the X method for that? Anybody you got the same thing? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Good, Kayla, that's a good job. All right. Next. What about what about this one? Um, 3x squared minus 2x and x minus 1. <coughs> like this? Yes. Well, the, the thing about it is, is you have, I'm not sure about how, how right this is. Me either. First of all, is this a linear factor here? No. So this is a quadratic. Okay, this is this is lin linear means this x to one power. So this is a linear factor. So would be, there be three of them? So there should be three factors, and this is quadratic. So what you're going to do on this is. You're going to factor out a common factor here, which is uh, x. x. So you have x times 3x squared minus 5x plus 2. And then you'll factor this out and get your correct answer. So now you can use the box method? I mean, not the box, the x method on that? You could use, actually, you, I know you didn't intend to say box method, but you actually could use the box method with this too. But, but, she, but she meant to say x method. Yeah. So, so you unintentionally gave two right answers. <laughs> That's how right you are. You, you couldn't say anything wrong if you tried. <laughs> and then, did you use the X method on this? Yeah. The remainder? So we get 2 times 3, which is 
6, negative 5, and then Then divide by a. So on the left we get negative one third. Oh, sorry. Thank you for correcting me. It shows how awesome you are. I said a, but put six underneath there. Thank you for catching that. So we get negative two thirds and negative one. So we're going to have we're going to have and so we bottoms up this thing. So we get x minus one, and that's the factor that Kayla came up with earlier, right? And then we have this x over here. So this is going to be our answer, right? So this is sort of working out the side work until we're ready to bring down that x and finish our work, right? Do you take that up, like on the next one? Yeah, on the next. You want? You ready to go to the next one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, the next one here. Can you go ahead. Can you take out, can you take out two also like two x or just the x? Now the thing about it is if you take out just x, well you could try that first, but then you take out x and you're gonna have like you'll have six x squared minus twenty two x plus twelve, right? But you still have a common factor here. What is your other factor possible? Two, right? So 2x times 3x squared minus 11x plus 6. Is that what you meant? Yeah. Okay. Just making sure we take out two also. Yeah, that's right. And if you can't see to do it right off the bat, it doesn't hurt to take out the x first and then have an improved product and so when you go factor everything out what are you going to get for this and then did you use x method too yes. on that so she's got six times 12 which is what is that 72 that's a pretty big number there and then we have, well, we're, hang on a second, we're going to use this one here. Yeah, thanks for catching that. So we're going to use this thing right here, 18, right? 18 and negative 11. Negative 11. So is that, is that negative 9 and negative 2? Yeah. And then we divide by 3. So here we get our negative 3. And here we get this for this x minus two thirds, we have three x minus two. So that's where this comes from. And this x minus three is where that comes from. So this would be our answer. So I hope it's been a pretty good review from last year and I really, I'm really glad that you're sort of piecing some things together from last year about that. That's good. Okay, what I want to do is the, the next section here, 7 through 10, is going to go pretty fast. And it has to do with solving mentally. And uh, did, did you work that out yet? Yeah, the first one. Okay, what did you get for the first one, Angel? X squared equals 1. X squared equals 1? Yeah. No, that's not. No? You should get an X equals answers. No. All these should be X equals answers. Well, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'm going to write down the answer here. Okay, and I just did that mentally. Now I'm going to now I'm going to dial back and show you how I came up with that mentally. What you have is 
you have we have something in algebra that's called the zero factor property so we set each one of these factors equal to zero and here we set we set x minus one equals to zero and we solve if we need to so x is equal to what plus one here plus one x is equal to one okay now that's kind of how you do it mentally so you kind of look at it so what does x have to be for this to be zero which in this case is going to be one and what does the zero factor property mean okay so you finish when you're ready to anything times zero, zero. equals zero that's a zero factor property anything times zero equals zero so so that w that's easy enough to do mentally isn't it yes. and so if you look at for instance number eight what are the answers for number eight mentally man yeah that was really good and and those will be those will be our answers right and yes. and that's really pretty simple and you can see that's very simple to do mentally, right? Yes. Now, yeah, there is a little bit of confusion on the next one, possibly, but I, it's also a teaching moment for where we're going to go next in the class. So that's a good thing. Okay, this one right here, you have x equals what? Negative three. X equals negative three. What do you think for this one here? X equals what? Negative uh, eighteen. Negative six. Oh wait, no. Negative six. Okay. Oh, it's the same. Even though you have a. So you have to cube everything in there, and then you have to square root out. Okay, because you can see this. Look at if we say if we say oh, x, okay. if we put x plus six cubed equal to zero, what would x have to be? Negative six, right? Mm -hmm. So is this our correct answer? Okay, now I want to tell you that, that I'm, going to, I'm going to tell you something, that this is our correct answer, but I want to show you something else about this one. Because not only is x equal to negative six, it's also equal to negative six, and it's also equal to negative six. Does that make any sense what I just said? Yes. Okay, I'll explain how this works out. And the reason is, is because x plus 6 cubed is equal to x plus 6, x plus 6, x plus 6. So what we call these, we call these repeating zeros repeating zeros and this happens to coincide well with where we're going in chapter 2.3 we're going to start talking about this uh, more tomorrow I think yeah so these are repeating zeros so what we call these are multiplicities of zeros and so we'll be talking about that tomorrow okay so these would be these would be our answers and also with multiplicity of three essentially okay and the last one here we have x is equal to negative six, negative six. Four. x is equal to negative four x is equal to five and what we would say is x is equal to negative six with multiplicity equals 2 and here we have multiplicity equals 4 here we have multiplicity is equal to 5 three. remember 3 do you remember talking about multiplicities last year and now it's 200 Burger King, Burger King. 
Oh, you remember talking about Burger King last year? Yeah. Oh man, you guys are so smart. How do you remember stuff like, how do you remember so far like that? Great memory. My gosh. Well, you just have a talent. Uh, that's all I can say. I'm just amazed. I can say I have good. All right. So with that,